I've got three IEMs here today that all come in under 40 US dollars or at 40 US dollars, and all three look and feel pretty good, but one of these might have the worst frequency response graph that I've ever seen. It's pretty bad, at least in an IEM. I've seen worse in a headphone. And so my plan for this review was to find out which of these three was the best in this budget range under 40 US dollars, whether or not the IEM here with the dreadful frequency response graph actually sounds any good, and then see if they can stack up against one of the other kings in the budget category, the Blonde BLO3. Let's get into it. three IEMs I've got here today have been provided by a combination of Linsol and also Melbourne Tri-Fi Audio. So I want to say a huge thanks to both of them. Make sure you check out the links down below in the description and click through to buy from them and say thanks for sending out these samples. Of course, before we get to that, you're going to want to know which one you should buy. And so let me introduce each of them first in no particular order. This is just literally the order I picked up the boxes. And the first one I've got is the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. Kiwi Ears made the fantastic orchestra IEM a while ago, and I've now got the orchestra light here. I'll be reviewing that one very soon. And the cadenza comes in at just 35 US dollars, making it a very affordable option from this brand. They're using a 10 millimeter beryllium driver in there. That's a dynamic driver. And the cadenza has an impedance of 32 ohms and sensitivity of 110 decibels. So they're easy to drive, but they shouldn't be too bad on his having a relatively high impedance. As is the case with all of these IEMs, the cadenzas have nice tips, a nice cable, and a generally nice design. In fact, out of all three, I'd probably say I like the look and feel of the cadenza the most. They're a nice black acrylic shell with a beautiful purple sort of swirly faceplate. I think they look lovely. At this point, it's worth mentioning that I did something that I don't normally do for reviews, and I actually measured these as I unpacked them and had a look at them and wrote down their specs, etc. And the Cadenza's frequency response looked really impressive. They've got one of the best linear bass responses I've seen in any IEM. I'm not saying it's the best, I'm saying it's up there with some of the best. But that doesn't always translate into a great sounding IEM, so we'll have to wait and see. From there, I moved over to the Tangzu one -er. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, let me know in the comments. But this one comes in at just 19 US dollars, making it the cheapest of this lot. It's also using a 10 millimeter dynamic driver, and the impedance and sensitivity of the one er is 20 ohms and 107 decibel sensitivity, again making it easy enough to drive, but shouldn't be too bad on hiss. Again, we've got nice tips, a nice cable, a generally nice design. The design feels a little bit cheaper, but I think it looks nice, it's quite understated. And I would say that the cable on the one er is a bit of a generic feeling cable. It's kind of like a silver version of the same sorts of cables that we're used to seeing on things like blonde IEMs. And that's not bad, but it's not quite as nice to interact with as the cable, particularly on the cadenza, but also on the other IEM we'll get to in a second, being the Khan. When I measured the frequency response of the one er, it also appears to have fantastic bass response. It tapers off a little bit more at the bottom end compared to the cadenza, but at the same time, it looks to have maybe better treble control, not as many peaks, or at least not as high of a peak as the cadenza has. And so straight away, I was going to be interested to compare the two, having similar but slightly different looking frequency responses. From there, we moved to the collaboration IEM, which is the QKZ and HBB Khan. And this one is the one at the top of the tree, coming in at 40 US dollars. The Khan's using a dual dynamic design with a 10 millimeter and a 7.8 millimeter driver in there. And it comes in with 10 ohm impedance and 117 decibel sensitivity. So this is an IEM that on certain devices could cause some problems with hiss. I don't have anything here that actually hisses very much, so I can't tell you how bad it's going to get. But those specs would have me thinking that if you've got a hiss prone device, it might be a problem on those. For most devices, you're going to have no problems at all. It's only going to be those that you know to be prone to hiss. Again, we've got nice design, nice cables, nice tips, but I would say a couple of things on this one. One of them is that I really like the fact that it also includes kind of like a little semi-hard case. 
But I'd also say that the design of the Khans, even though it feels great, it looks a little bit cheap and tacky in the design. Maybe that's too strong, actually. It just looks like a cheaper design trying to look fancy and expensive. I prefer kind of the more understated, no-frills designs of the other two. I think it's just a little bit overdone. It's kind of got a, on top of the IEM of the car, not the faceplate, it's got this sort of slightly protruding section of a clear acrylic or something with gold inside. And it looked lovely in the B-roll, I have to say, but I didn't particularly like the look of it in a day-to-day sense. It just looks like an IEM trying too hard to look fancy, just to me and my tastes. Now, as you probably already worked out, as we worked through these, there's only three IEMs. I've talked about two with fantastic looking frequency responses. And that means that this is the one with the frequency response that I think looks about as bad as anything I've seen. The good news is that frequency response doesn't always tell the full story. So I did go into this comparison thinking that there was a chance for them to redeem themselves. And indeed, they definitely do sound better than their frequency response. And so let's jump in now and talk about how each of these sounds and find out which one I think is the best for under 40 US dollars out of these three. If you're trying to work out what piece of gear you should buy next, then the Passion for Sounds Recommends database might be helpful for you. In the description box of every single video, just down here, you'll find the Passion for Sounds Recommends section. If you click on this link, it'll take you through to the Passion for Sounds Recommends Airtable database. What you'll see in here is every single product that I've ever reviewed and recommend, in some cases products that I own but maybe haven't reviewed but recommend. And then once you're in here, you can use the filter button up here to decide to filter by things like whether or not the product type is for a headphone, for example. So maybe you're looking for a headphone. Filter it by that and you can now see every headphone I recommend. You can sort it by price, which is the default sorting or any other sorting method that you want. And then once you've got the list of products you're looking for, you've got the links to the reviews of the products and then also purchasing links for global retailers and also regional retailers for the US, Australia, Canada and the UK. So feel free to play around with this, sort it, filter it however you want to. It won't affect what anybody else sees and you can hopefully find just the right products for you. I hope this is helpful and now let's get back to the review. Starting now with the cheapest IEM in the mix being the one Er, And these have fantastic bass extension, no sense of bass emphasis, just presence and quality the whole way down. They produce a wonderful sense of rumble when you need it. They're just very, very impressive for a $19 IEM. I do find that their treble is just a bit too present and prominent. And this is from a subjective point of view now, just listening to them, not thinking about the graph. I actually feel like there's just a bit too much treble energy from them from time to time. But that's more from a tonal point of view. They deliver a sound that's crisp and clean, but not harsh. So even though I do think there's a bit too much treble emphasis, what's delivered there is of good quality. The problem is that they slightly overemphasize things like the strum of a guitar, there was a tambourine in one of the tracks I listened to, and it was just pushed too far forwards in the mix. Not in terms of space, in terms of the amount of it I was hearing, the volume of it in the mix was too loud. It drew my attention to things that should be background sounds, not foreground sounds. The soundstage from the one er I would describe as compact, but very well separated within the soundstage. Everything had a clear place, nothing felt too congested or on top of each other, and so whilst it was all inside the head, it was very nicely done. Overall, I was extremely impressed with the one er and I started to wonder if we had a new reference point for budget IEMs on our hands, or if it was actually going to get pipped by one of the others, so let's carry on and see, which means we're going to move on to the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. The Cadenza initially comes across as just a little bit brighter, a little bit sharper than the one er. I felt like I couldn't listen to it quite as loud as I could with the one er. I think the bass is equally as well extended and of good quality, but it's offset by some of those treble peaks that I talked about in the frequency response section. What I found as I listened more was I kept wanting these a bit louder in the mid range, which made me want to turn them up to get that extra sense of presence in the mids. But when I did that, the treble would get too harsh and bitey sometimes, and I'd have to pull them back again. So it was a little bit of a dance with these, and I wasn't initially enjoying them as much. Again, though, I'd say that they are incredibly impressive for the money. If you're someone that's not as sensitive to treble as me, you're probably going to love these. And again, I'd say, much like the one Er, that the sound stage from these was fairly compact, but wonderfully separated again. They deliver that deep bass extension even better than the one Er. As I listened to more and more tracks, I felt like the depth of bass extension, the control, and the presence of the bass was better than the one Er. But both are really fantastic and outstanding for the price. And so for me, the only real criticism I have for the Cadenza is it just goes a little bit too far in some of that treble area with the, some of those peaks and points of emphasis, and it can get just a bit shouty as a result. And so at this point, it was a bit of a toss up between the one Er and the Cadenza. Both had their strengths. But as I said before, I was still going to give a chance to the Khan to redeem itself from that horrible looking frequency graph, and also to find out if sometimes things sound very different to how they look on paper. 
and indeed the Khan was much better than I expected. It does come across a bit forward in the upper mid-range and the treble, as the graph would suggest, but the base is actually surprisingly good. As long as you get a track where the base sits in the range where that sort of hill is at the bottom of the frequency response, then the card's going to present it really well. The problem is when you get different tracks with different places for the majority of their base, the base can come and go a bit because of those dropaways below and above the hill in the base. What I found as I spent more time with the cards was that they're very enjoyable for vocals. If you've got a recording that is mostly focused on vocals, they can be excellent. But as I said, the bass is a bit hit and miss depending on the recording. And what that also leads to is that the cards separate sounds really, really well, but it comes at the expense of tonality. What can happen with a tuning like this is that we get this wonderful sense of each different sound in space being well separated, but it's because there's actually holes in the frequency response causing these big gaps in the sound. And so what you'll find with the cards is that on some tracks they will sound absolutely amazing, and then on other tracks it's like something's kind of missing a little bit, or the tonality is just a bit off and it's not as natural as it should be. And so for me, I'm actually quite impressed with the cards. I just wish their tuning wasn't quite as extreme. If it had had some more carefully and gently tuned peaks and cuts along the lines of what they do, but a bit more subtly managed, they could have been really special. As it is, for me, they're just too inconsistent across too many tracks, and they can get a little bit too forward and shouty in the mids because they lack bass sometimes. And so I was very comfortable pushing these aside and sticking with the Cadenza and the one Er as the two possible winners of this budget IM shootout. And so that meant it was time for a showdown. I plugged in the Cadenza and the One Ur, and I fired up Little Black Submarine by the Black Keys. And starting off with the Cadenza, the vocal on this track was just hovering beautifully in space out in front of me a little bit. The guitar also had its own place, and I think I just had the vocal was out here. It was off to the side actually a little bit. The guitar was on the other side. Both had their own space, but they still felt connected in a coherent soundscape. The tonality was very natural, very honest and true to life. But I found that as the organs and the drums came in, to get the volume that I wanted from those, I was having to turn up the cadenzas a little bit, and then the vocal was getting a little bit too shouty. As the track got really busy, the cadenzas handled it really well. Even though things get a bit splashy and loud in this track, and that the cadenzas already have some of those treble peaks, everything was handled really well. It was quite refined and quite well controlled. Something else that stood out to me was that the kick bass had fantastic control from the cadenza. It was thumpy, it was present, but it was very tightly held by the cadenza's drivers. And so this was going to be a tough battle. Moving over to the One Er, sticking of course to the same track, and the One Er was a bit more forward with the vocal, it was a bit closer to me, it was a bit more present in the mix, and I felt like the sound was a bit less refined as well. Much like with the cadenzas on this track, I was having trouble turning up the volume to get the presence and body in the vocal that I wanted, because again the treble and the slight lack of refinement from the one er was just making it a little bit hard to listen to as I turned up the volume. I felt like the tonality from the one er was not quite as good as the cadenza on this track. What was happening was that the upper mid range was just a little bit too forward from the one er. I think the cadenza balanced that a bit better, and it's probably due to the fact that the cadenza focuses its emphasis higher up in the treble frequencies, and also has less roll-off, it's a gentle roll-off from the one er, but the cadenza almost has no roll-off all the way down in the bass. So you're going to get that sub-bass presence and weight to kind of offset some of the upper mid-range and treble emphasis. When things get a bit splashier in the track on the one er, they do keep things fairly well controlled, fairly smooth, fairly refined. And that's partly because they've got less spikes in the treble than the cadenza. So whilst the cadenza is more refined, it's still got more spikes, more emphasis in treble. So it's kind of a trade-off there. You end up kind of with a wash. Both end up about the same because the cadenza has a spike, but it does it in a more refined way versus the one er uh, doesn't have the spikes, but it's a bit less refined. So the end result is kind of the same. But where the difference was for me was that the one er uh, couldn't keep up with keeping everything as well separated. On the busier, splashier, noisier moments, the cadenza handled it all. It kept it controlled, it kept it separated, you could hear each individual sound being presented on its own. With the one er, uh, things started to get a little bit muddy. Nothing major, nothing drastic, but that was a separation point for me. In a very similar fashion, thinking about the bass, the impact again was there from the one er uh, as it was from the cadenza, but I felt like it was less controlled. The cadenza felt like it had a vice grip on the bass. It was delivering the kick bass, it was slammy, it was punchy, but it stopped as soon as it was meant to. Whereas I feel like there was just a little bit less control from the one er. It would punch, it would hit you with the impact of the kick bass, but it was a little bit wobbly around the edges. Nothing major, but that's where I heard the difference. And so for me, whilst this was a tough battle, I did end up giving the edge to the cadenza. 
I think both are amazing IEMs for the price. If you choose the one Earth for its price point, I think it's a great choice still. But if you can spend that little bit more and go to say 35 US dollars on the Cadenza, I do think it's the slightly more technically capable IEM. You are going to get a little bit more treble. It is going to be a little bit harder sometimes to get the same level of mid-range presence and weight without getting too loud for the treble. But I think for me, that's the trade-off I'd make for that wonderful technicality of being able to keep everything separated and well under control, no matter how busy the music gets. And also to enjoy that slight improvement in refinement in those upper registers. But of course, that then brings us to the question of whether the cadenza here is actually a worthwhile choice in the world of budget IEMs, or whether it still can't compete with the blonde BLO3. Now the BLO3s for me aren't necessarily the very best in terms of budget IEMs, but they're very, very good. There's other options like the CCA CSN and also the Blonde's own BLO1 that I think are also comparable and some people might prefer. But knowing how many people have tried and love the BLO3, I thought that was the comparison to go with. And the first thing I noticed when I went to put these in was just how annoying they are to get fitting right. I find these to be one of the worst fitting IEMs I've ever tried, and it's a lot of fiddling to get them right with just the right tips, just the right insertion. But once you do, they're a very rewarding IEM listening to I Stand in Wonder by Joe Cocker, and the cadenza does a wonderful job of separating all those opening sounds, the different percussive and sort of ambient sounds in the mix, you could call them, I guess. And when Joe Cocker's voice comes in, the tonality is excellent, and there's a great sense of body and texture in the sound as well. The kick bass in this track is solid from the cadenza, but it's not deep and rumbly, because it shouldn't be. I've listened to this track across a whole lot of different systems, and it's not a deep kick bass. It's quite a tight, fairly high-pitched kick bass in the scheme of kick basses. As the track picks up, the cadenzas, as you'd expect, do get a little bit more aggressive. I've already talked about that treble, so I won't go into that in detail. But this track isn't the best recording. It has got a little bit of kind of what I call excess energy in the mix for it. And that does come through from the cadenzas. They're not horrible, but they do show you what's going on in the recording. Moving over to the BLO3, and really not knowing what to expect, I didn't look at the frequency response, and I hadn't listened to them for a while, so I was kind of going in blind again, having forgotten what they were like. And they absolutely impressed me again with their soundstage and separation. They were absolutely on par with the cadenzas in that regard. I think the vocal from the Blonde BLO3 was a bit smoother to listen to, but it was a little bit less natural. I think the cadenzas nailed the tonality of the vocal better than the Blondes, but the Blondes are a bit easier to listen to. They're a little bit more relaxed sounding. The kick bass that I spoke about before has a bit more body and impact from the BLO3s, and I think technically they're probably enhancing it slightly. It's not entirely true to the recording, but having said that, it doesn't stray so far that it sounds unnatural. It's only because, as I said, I've had this track in my library for many, many years. I've listened to it across a whole range of systems, so I kind of know exactly how it sounds across the board. And I do feel like the Blonde BLO3 is enhancing a little bit, but it's staying within a range that I would still call natural. When we get to the chorus and that more sort of busy, slightly overly energetic section of this mix, what I found was the BLO3 was still equally as kind of energetic and in some ways aggressive as the cadenza, but it's also where it showed up what I think to be the strength of the cadenza, and that is the refinement of the BLO3 was a bit lacking here. It didn't feel like it was as well in control. It didn't feel like it was keeping things as smooth and as accurate as it should be when things got busy. And that speaks to me to a driver in the cadenza that is incredibly technically capable. Firstly, it's got that amazing bass extension. And secondly, when things do get busy, when things get very active, very energetic in a mix, the cadenza just takes it all in its stride. Now, I'm not sitting here for a second suggesting the cadenza is some sort of giant killer IEM. It's going to rapidly fall short of IEMs in the $100 plus range. I haven't taken the time to do those comparisons here because if you can spend more money, generally speaking, you're going to find better IEMs at that next tier. And I've got plenty of reviews here on the channel where you can go and check that out. And so what I'd say for now is that if you're someone that loves the BLO3, I think the cadenza is kind of a modest upgrade over it. I wouldn't say rush out and buy one, it's going to blow away the BLO3. It absolutely won't. And the same is true for the one Ur. I think the one Ur, the Blonde BLO3 and the Cadenza are all kind of in the same ballpark. I think the one Ur and the Blonde BLO3 are kind of comparable. I'd probably give the nod to the BLO3 just a little bit, slightly give it the edge and slightly prefer it. But then the technicalities of the Cadenza go to the next level again at the expense of a slightly hotter treble. And so what I'd say is that if you're in the market for a budget IEM, I think the cadenzas are amazing, but I'd also say check out my other reviews of budget IEMs here on the channel, because there's other IEMs that I mentioned before, like the CCA CSN, Blondes BLO1, there's a few others that I can't think of off the top of my head, there's some amazing IEMs in this budget range. 
That said, if you're looking at the cadenza, or you're looking at the one or you're looking at the Khan, then the summary of what I'd say here is, I'd give the Khan a miss. I don't see the point in spending 40 US dollars on it when there's other IEMs that are cheaper and clearly better. Specifically, I'm talking about the one Ur and the Cadenza as just two of them. And if you're looking at either the one Ur or the Cadenza, you can't go wrong. They're amazing IEMs for the price. The technicalities of both are fantastic, and even more so in the case of the Cadenza. And both are going to give you generally a very natural and honest tonality across the board, with just a little bit of treble emphasis done in different ways. So both are fantastic. You can't go wrong. At these prices, they're absolute winners. But if you ask me to highlight my absolute favorite, my absolute recommendation, it's the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. And so as always, I hope this video has helped you to choose an IEM that's right for you. I hope you found it useful, helpful, informative, etc. And if you have, I'd love it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.